I'm gonna start. So hello sure. and uh, welcome back to Madame Rotterdam live stream. Today I have really special guests, like really beautiful brother and sister siblings who started the yoga business. So hello guys, thank you Hi. for being here. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, first maybe if you could each introduce yourself and what you're doing in your company so people know a little bit more about it. Sure. Uh, I'm Panda. <laughs> I'm the sister. <laughs> Usually people are mis having a misconception. I think that I make the yogurt and my brother is more yeah. on the sales Selling. part, but it's <laughs> actually the other way around. So yeah, my yeah, brother true. makes the yogurt and I do more of the sales, marketing parts. Yeah, and teamwork, huh? Yeah, yeah, and I actually like it because it's isn't it hot like the girl is holding the business and it's like the guy is holding like the kitchen and a cooker and i like, <laughs> yeah, I like uh, guys who well, cook I, you know, I wish i could cook but it's really his talent i think it's because it's really a hard thing to do so. yeah but i think my teacher was good huh my mother yeah. oh, eventually nice, yeah. just got the basics from her and stuff and it's very nice to work with the sister with the family you know yeah you can talk about anything you yeah can always, uh, you know if you have a problem they are there immediately and you know the bond is uh, yeah you know what one of the uh, amazing thing I like about your company is actually family business and I love <laughs> family businesses because usually uh, you can trust each other right yeah, they course. say that there are not nobody you can find more with than your family but nobody mm. you will fight for more than your family but you can fight yeah. together you, you know as much but you exactly. also fight for each other also I think we are good at really different things so mm -hmm. that's a really good combination like okay our, our trust is yeah. completely like we completely trust each other but then we are good on different things and that really balances like mm -hmm. if we if we were both doing the same kind of thing like yeah. I, I can never make yogurt for example so. and I can never make a design <laughs> like no. her so, you know, she's very good with the, you know the, the how do you say the pictures and the colors that's going together <laughs> Oh, sorry. Uh, so, oh, I, I hear myself. Yeah. Yeah, I'm now very <laughs> famous. Thank you. <laughs> because I want to read the questions uh, from here because I get a lot of people mm -hmm. asking questions. Um, okay, so let's start with the name of the company. Mm -hmm. The Luvia. 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 And where did the name come from? Does, does it have a meaning? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, Luvia, it means the really, really ancient people that lived in the Anatolia like 9,000 years before I think maybe Christ more or so, or so. Wow. with the Hittites. And uh, they were speculated to be the first milk processor. So we have we have seen mm -hmm. this really ancient scripts, ancient like wall carvings of like, for example, our yeah. logo. We took it from a really ancient carving. Also next to our and hometown, huh? you can still find if you dig, for example, they were going to make an auto park or something. huh? Yeah. I think and so. when they dig, a new city came under the city, you know, it's always like uh, discovering something yeah. new. And uh, that's why we said the Luvians. Uh, yeah, and our good. whole idea of our company is like we believe, okay, technology is great, we mm. love technology, but mm. everything getting really fast paced, mm. especially in the food industry, is yeah. getting not really good but bad for us because the yeah. uh, illnesses mm. are increasing accordingly and everything. So mm. our point was to bring back the, like the old eating habits, the old way of making food. So yeah. we, we call it slow food, so not the less fast chemicals food, but it's and really the opposite. Less processed food, I think, is... Uh, of so course, we don't say everything natural is perfect. Poison yeah. is also natural, yeah. huh? <laughs> but I think the less processed and yeah. it's less made for the, the profit and least pure profit. Yeah. Least so industrial. So Luvia really resembles the old ways of food making for us and how we mm -hmm. want to, to pre 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 yeah. prevent or... No, That's sorry, why we present. want... Oh. Yeah, that's why yeah. we wanted to take a historical and the ancient tribe yeah. that is lost to time. And uh, yeah, maybe we can revive them back. I love that you said uh, you're taking it from an old um, ancient people doing mm -hmm. uh, things. You said next to your hometown. Where is your home? What's it called? Your hometown? It's called Tarsus. Tarsus. Yeah, it's you know, the like, Pole of Tarsus. Uh, yeah. It's a really, it. really ancient place. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, I think, more than 9,000 years yeah. or something, huh? It's the place where the Cleopatra met with the Marcus Antonius. It's oh, it was their meeting point. <laughs> nice. I don't know. It's a very historical city, and tons of different cultures have been in Anatolia. Yeah. That's why when we dig, we find Greek, we find Roman, and we even find things that we don't know. You know, and it's very nice. It's it's our luck to yeah. uh, to yeah. raise uh, to be raised in that. Uh, very mishmash community and mishmash of cultures. Yeah, so you, which you added get, uh, some uh, from uh, each culture to us. So you actually. got like uh, all the mixed uh, cult uh, culture within you. Actually, it is true because 
when I was searching about yogurt to, find, mm. to take some questions for you guys, I found out there are it's Greek, it's Middle Eastern, mm-hmm. it's Turkish, it's uh, North Africa, uh, yeah. African, um, where they make the yogurt. What type of yogurt you're making? Uh, we always make? say it's Rotterdam's yogurt. We don't want to make a <laughs> yeah. distinction of Turkish, Greek, or anything because it's how made with. How can the food have a you know race <laughs> or something? It's yogurt, it's yogurt. It's made in a. Certain and just because we use the Dutch milk and the Dutch yeast, so we can say it, it's Dutch yogurt. Oh, if, if I if I use uh, you know uh, the, the cows which use a Turkish soils grass, then of course it's going to be a Turkish uh, yogurt because I'm uh, using the ingredients of that area. But yeah. we are using and the our, ingredients of this area yeah. right now. And our way of making doesn't belong to a certain culture mm. either because mm. it's just the really oldest way of yeah. making. So it's like currently the industrial way is that they take the industrial starter cultures and yeah. they make it from there. Yeah. But how we make is every batch is made from the previous live batch. So And that's uh. really the basic of mm-hmm. yogurt making. Wow. You so have to keep the yogurt um, alive yeah. because yeah. it's bacteria. It's, it's born, it's living and then it's... it's uh, dying you know yeah and if you just renew the the bacteria all the time you know uh, populate the bacteria the milk with the bacteria then it's usually fresh and of course everything has a cycle beginning and an end yeah, that's true okay if i could go uh, to the process of you making it since mm-hmm. you are the guy behind oh. uh, <laughs> behind the engine in the simplest way mm-hmm. how would you make it how like how can you explain the process of it? Yeah, I think uh, you have to have passion to make the thing. I love the milk so much. I love uh, to drink it. I love to smell it. I he love treats everything them about like it. his babies, first True. of all. <laughs> I don't want people to but eat my yogurt, <laughs> but still, uh, the simplest way I think, because when we do something, we want to make a special for everybody, because everybody has different tastes, and I cannot just say this is good for your body. Everyone has a different metabolism eventually. Yeah, that's, true. that's why uh, when we talk with people, we are still trying to find the Dutch people's taste. Yeah. Because some people like it sour and some people like it sweet. And here, the, some people eat it for on bite, the breakfast. Yeah. And some people eat it for uh, dinner or lunch or something. So when we go to the chefs or the people who are like the top of the cuisine here in the Netherlands, most of them like it sour, huh? Uh, some like it sour and some like it sweet, so I personalize the yogurt and make it special for them. And he, Otherwise, uh, he, it would be like a machine uh, that I can just uh, yeah. you know, stamp and uh, just... And how, how long is the process of you making one can of yogurt? Uh, one full day it takes, because wow. the fermentation takes long and I don't want to interfere in the fermentation with some artificial things. I can always put more yeast or if I put more sugar in it then it's going to be more thicker. Yeah. But I want to make it totally natural, uh, because the milk here is very good that I don't want to waste any single drop of it. It's yeah. high quality. Do you want to say something? You wanted to add something? No, yeah, I she's just going to... <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I was going to jump into uh, the milk. You said that you mm-hmm. get the milk out of um, grass fed mm-hmm. and not wheat fed. Yes. Why and what's the difference? Well, it's totally different. I mean, the cow, uh, the cows here, as I said, it's totally t- traditionally famous. Even my yeah. gra- grandmother knows the cows here, right? <laughs> even in Turkey. And, Dutch uh, cows. Yeah, yeah, it's very good and it's, it's top quality. Yeah. And whatever they eat, of course, uh, whatever they produce. When we boil the milk, it's also for sterilization, but it's also uh, the, the animalistic things in the milk uh, to be eliminated yeah. so that we can consume it. Because when you take it out of the cow, you still taste the cow because uh, you have to boil it to take the animalistic thing uh, again to, to, nu- to nurture it or yeah. something. I don't know the terms for it. I'm and not a doctor. <laughs> grass fed, because I think you asked the difference yeah. from a regular milk, yeah. like how it's different. Hmm. Uh, we usually collect regularly the, the milk reports yeah. from, from our farms and the grass fed is really much more like higher in nutrition or mm-hmm. you have different qualities of milk. So mm-hmm. there are different varieties to that and grass fed is really like the highest quality both for nutrition wise and to, yeah. to process like or make things out of so it does it uh, t- taste different as well the b- both milks from uh, grass fed and think uh, wheat grass fed, fed is more intense of course and also you cannot make yogurt from a supermarket milk mm-hmm. because it's ultra high temperature UHT 
they boil it up to the 300 degrees or something so there is no bacteria left inside eventually it's just the white uh, whitish water yeah i love the milk and the good thing is the bacteria is inside because the probiotics right now they are even selling the pills of yeah, it yeah many so. people buy like a regular yogurt and yeah. the probiotic pills as a supplement but actually hmm. we always search the scientific parts of these things we so like to. the raw freshly made milk it's not raw because it's boiled but the freshly made yogurt sorry is containing like 50 times more probiotics than a than a probiotic pill so we find it wow. um, irrelevant like yeah. if you are actually consuming fresh yogurt it's irrelevant for you to take an extra probiotic yeah. supplement and we also want to make it very very special eventually because uh, there are certain laws and regulations for a milk to be like a wider milk it will be outside the cows have to be outside 120 days the and there should yeah and there should be enough land for each and every cow to you know the grass to feed the grass the only thing i am personally i just i'm just gonna say it out of the box the only thing i'm concerned is the the fertilizers they are using in the netherlands because i am not totally sure about the fertilizers i'm not even talking about the other uh, farms who are giving the ready food to the cows i'm never <laughs> gonna use their milk but the only thing I want to know is what kind of fertilizers they are using here because uh, since we want to make the perfect product for the wow. perfect people here. So it would even affect if, uh, of the type of the soil will affect the milk? Of course. Yeah, wow. because it's, the grass it's is what they eat and yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, for example, if a cow is sick, the, the farmers are usually going to use antibiotics yeah, and right. automatically they have to separate the, that cow from the other ones. Otherwise, I cannot uh, use antibiotic. It will be in the milk. Yeah. And even if I boil it, because it's chemical, I cannot sterilize it. It will stay inside. Since you, uh, I want to ask about when did you guys started this and why did you start? <laughs> <laughs> nice. The yogurt. I think the first reason we started was because we couldn't find the yogurt for mm -hmm. our taste here, and our parents, for our ourself. family, was totally really concerned selfish. that we <laughs> never eat fresh yogurt in the Netherlands because yeah. in the city it's impossible to find fresh yogurt. Like yeah. we don't have any such brands making mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And like we knew the industrial doesn't really contain the probiotics you mm -hmm. need or so. So my mom was really like, one of you has to learn how <laughs> to make it, and you're just gonna eat your own fresh yogurt regularly and guess who was the one that learned it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my so god so that's how it started yeah. like we really wanted to consume ourselves because you were also probably not born here so you would notice certain foods you can just not get used to here and for us that mm -hmm. was yogurt mm -hmm. actually yeah. so you didn't like the yogurt here no no, 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 no oh no. my god it's crazy <laughs> huh you can just uh, <laughs> drink it something like it's to it totally liquid it tastes so know. different oh yeah and yeah, yeah. True. And most of them are in plastic cups. Yeah. I don't know. Everybody is shouting, saying, "Please leave the plastic." You know. Finally, this year, I think they are doing something. Yeah, I think. But from the beginning, we were using yeah. glass eventually, and that's what we wanted to, you know, use. So you're using glass containers. Of course. Only Always. like he is really um, mm. careful about it because yeah. from the moment he goes to buy the milk, he buys it with uh, RVS, RVS, like the metal glass. Uh, thing. So mm. we never use mm -hmm. plastic, even when buying the milk or when like carrying really how from it the beginning be. process till the end mm -hmm. he never uses but why? any kind because come on if you leave the even the water in the plastic bottle you taste the plastic a bit huh don't you yeah, if you leave for it sure. for a few days yeah. for sure especially this is a fermentation mm -hmm. uh, fermented product and for fermentation i think it's really important right Imagine that it's in I, a glass yeah, so i put the milk there in 40 degrees it's, it can also melt the plastic a bit okay also, right? i got what you mean so Particles of the plastic will get into the yeah, yeah. particles taste because wow. also it's bacteria. It's going to get some reaction with it for sure. Yeah. Wow! Did you study it deep down to the bio uh, biological part of the yogurt? Do you know? How I studied. It I am. I am not an expert. I. I wish I studied like the food industrial thing in the university, but uh, I studied other uh, subjects eventually. But uh, the last one year or two years, I have been to different factories. I talked with different uh, doctors. I read some books about it. And also I uh, talk with some professors about what can it uh, happen and also I uh, attended their lectures. Nice. I think it's more than enough for us to know the, the level. We don't have to know everything, yeah. but it should be enough for people to enjoy. Yeah? No, because I was wa wondering how does the bacteria turn milk into something thick? And yeah. 
It's and magic, I like, yeah, yeah. I still cannot believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm guessing that you uh, love it so much. Hmm. Um, what is the hardest part about it, though? The hardest part is that the... Just like, ah. no, no, the only thing is I think I can uh, consider hard is that the people here in Netherlands, even if it's a zoeval country, it's like a dairy country, very nice meal, but they don't know the yogurt. They don't have a yogurt culture. The cheese culture here is perfect. Per, yeah. The beer is perfect. <laughs> but uh, there is no yogurt and everybody eats it only for breakfast, which is of course doable, but I mean always they have to discover something new, you know? Yeah, yeah. and in the Indian culture, we have it, you know... Oh my part, God, yeah, your cuisine like, is crazy. You, yeah, it's yeah. part of, you know, sometimes dinner or lunch yeah. or breakfast, it's, it's there. Mm -hmm. You know, yogurt, yeah. it's a must. Uh, and it tastes good, so I like it. But you also have very nice sauces, huh, in yeah. India. Yeah, sure. Where were you in India? In Mumbai, Mumbai. it was so when beautiful. Were you there? Oh Five, six years ago. Time yeah. passes fast, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you really go there? Fast. It was a study trip and oh, it was so nice. We only went for 10 days, mm. but with a lot of people. Yeah, but you were nearly going to be in Bollywood, I think. Huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> you could get, uh, they say it's easier for people from outside to get into Bollywood than people from inside I to get into I think so. Huh? What was the guy's <laughs> name? No. Ma <laughs> I forgot the guy's name. Like you met an actor? Yeah, I have some friends that are actors. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Usually in Mumbai, they say if you uh, went through the airport and didn't see one famous person like okay. you haven't like yeah because it's it's the Hollywood of India. Yeah, it's, it's, oh my god, it's very big, huh? It's huge industry. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's very good. And uh, it's one of my favorite cities in, in all India. So, yeah, it's amazing. It's fun. I could talk more about but it. Where, where in India were you? If I can also ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Now, now we have our questions. Yeah, now we have. <laughs> um, it's it's gonna be about Mumbai people. Uh, no, actually, I'm uh, originally from Hyderabad, but I lived in Mumbai most. Ah, you're from ah, the north. Nice. No, it's actually. Uh, south, middle, south. There you go. She's her uh, geography is <laughs> better. Yeah, so you know it. You know a little bit more yeah. about it. She's yeah. trying to drag me there sometimes. Yeah. Let's go to India. The so best. Come on, too far away. It's really beautiful. Yeah, it's, it, it, I say to people, if you have not been to India, you have not experienced life. Because India like really tests you on yeah. so many levels. Of course, come on. How many like you can see so many things and, and they get a reaction out of culture. you. Yeah. yeah, so. Okay, so <laughs> let's go back to <laughs> sure, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Um, why brought it up? Because of her. I was in Maastricht. <laughs> Oh, I really? was I was studying in Maastricht. But there's uh, nothing there. Oh my God! Yes, I made a mistake. Uh, sorry, Maastricht people. <laughs> I love Maastricht, but uh, eventually it's only a student city. Yeah. And uh, the good thing is everybody there speaks English, That's even true. the elderly people. So it was uh, nobody was speaking Dutch to me. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's why my Dutch was uh, not so good. But uh, eventually, uh, when I come to Rotterdam, because she was in Erasmus University. Uh, I saw eventually there are more opportunities here since it's the biggest port and still the biggest port of the whole Europe. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there are so many nationalities here, yeah, but still exactly. elderly people speak to you in Dutch. Once I was mm -hmm. like in a supermarket, she was talking to me in Dutch, I was like, sorry, English, such like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to talk to you anymore. It's okay, it's okay. I think it's, it's that is so funny. Um, but yeah, they have this. Uh, hmm. how, uh, how is the Rotterdam culture to people who started businesses? Do you think it's easy? Do you think it's hard? Was it easy for you to start the yoga business here? Did mm -hmm. you find a lot of support? Did you not? Yeah. If you can talk a little bit I more about your experience. Rotterdam wise, it's really good because in Rotterdam you don't mm -hmm. really feel like a foreigner because there are so many, so many international yeah, or anything. Yeah. But about the sector we started, because it's the dairy sector is one of the most Dutch sectors you can mm -hmm. get into. Mm -hmm. So we were like as yeah. two yeah. foreigners getting into Dutch like dairy industry that was so extremely Dutch. It yeah. was a bit hard because we had to pass a lot of um, tests. We had like everything, every regulation is yeah. in Dutch and the they come and check you, which is also in Dutch. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's good, huh? They yeah. check everything. And I, I really like when they check everything because what we try to create, we want to make it top uh, notch. But the thing I don't understand, how can they that, I don't want to say it, but how can they that other industrial things uh, add those industrial things inside yeah, the product? We started noticing Last that when we got into the thing, that even mm -hmm. the healthy looking products are mm -hmm. actually really unhealthy when in general. When I learned, they, put, they could even put the chemicals in the eggs. Huh? Do you remember last year or something? It was philopili or philophilii or something, when they put something in the eggs. 
Why would they It was from Belgium and Netherlands to, to produce more. For a few weeks or months oh it was God. forbidden to eat eggs. Yeah, oh yes, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. After yeah. that I couldn't believe, you know, how can they put it in the egg without breaking or cracking it? Then I said, okay guys, if there is chemical in everything, then we have to do something where there is no chemical. Yeah, that's true. Uh, our expiry date is two weeks. And One uh, of the, yeah. the, like I said, we eat, we eat we read so many hmm. articles or like scientific things hmm. and one of the things was one of the professors of oncology or yeah. something he said like if we keep eating industrial by the year 2060 two out of every five children will be born with autism so it's yeah. really changing our dna or even our future generations Not sure. but i think food industry is the most underrated one because like uh, every other problem you really see and experience it right away but with the yeah. food you eat it but the results will come yeah, much but later it's not so. about that huh? i mean uh, otherwise how the medical companies are going to make money if you're not sick yeah also it's like yeah. a cycle which is uh, going most of the people are aware of it but the system right now in the world is established like this uh, the, the humanity is not achieved the threshold yeah. to you know yeah. to pass the greed when we let it go when we pass the greed i think it's going to be a lot different community yeah i, I can I, I completely agree with you it's so crazy what we sometimes i feel like i cannot eat anything just air and yeah. even yeah. air you can eat it because yeah. it has fumes and I stuff like so. that yeah. like, and soon you will uh, pay belasting for the air <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah i know oh don't let us start on the belasting <laughs> needs um but one other thing that i i feel like um it's good that young people, hmm. just like us, starting to realize, not like our parents, True. that this could lead to autism, it could lead to so many other things yeah. where you can look at the last generation, they had good things, but they yeah. also didn't know so many information that we know now, True. which is, you know, you guys are going to be one of the pioneers who are saying, hey, by the way, don't hmm. eat that, eat this. Um, and I, I feel like you, change starts by people like you. Like, no, I'm gonna decide I'm gonna mm -hmm. eat this and I'm gonna tell people more about of course. it. I mean, mm -hmm. thanks to the people like you, it will be known more and more. You, know? uh, you are uh, the yeah. main link uh, <laughs> in the community. Thank you. Eat yogurt, <laughs> their yogurt. Um, what Listen if, to her. <laughs> <laughs> what is the dream for you? Because I know now that you guys are uh, selling to restaurants. I saw that you. Uh, it's really B2B to B right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, B2B. When are you guys going to. If you give one example of B2B that you, you did, and when are you going to start B2C? Mm -hmm. Just example first to the B2B. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And how I you? think, yeah, we are currently more expanding on B2B because we. We are trying to get a nice portfolio of clients. Like we work with some Michelin <laughs> chefs, <laughs> like Hilton, Rotterdam, and like really nice clients. And we want to just grow that a bit. And B two C, we want it to yeah. happen with a really good supermarket. Yeah. But for that, we also first need to increase our capacity, or we first need to scale up a little bit in order to do that. So in 2019, uh, we are yeah, we planning about that. it. We have the business plan. It took a bit long, long time because we didn't put the profit in the middle of the company. Of ah, okay. course, uh, we want to earn money like everybody else, but we don't have the greed to. Yeah, you know, our to first challenge stuff. is to raise the food consciousness. <laughs> we are really like, oh, nice. you need to do this. And yeah, like this the hardest is thing that you ask me is the, the the culture, the dairy culture here is not so well known about the yogurt. Yeah, so or that's really what explaining the difference because when you say mm -hmm. yogurt. All uh, people know about yogurt is the 80 cent yogurt in the supermarket. So they immediately compare you to that. And you really oh need to God. spend a lot of time explaining the difference. Okay, yeah. but this has nothing to do with that. And so that was our biggest challenge this year. But yeah. for next year, we yeah, oh, we also want to start with Amsterdam sure. probably. So Amsterdam oh, nice. stuff, why not? You know, it's, uh, it can. Maybe you could start by teaching the Dutch of how to add yogurt into their uh, meals and from yeah. there it can well, grow. Well, I hope so. Right? Maybe, yeah. maybe some one Dutch chef is going to create something new with the Dutch, uh, I don't know, rabbit, uh, potato, and yogurt, uh, whatever, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you have your cuisine, huh? Yeah. Like we have our cuisine. The Dutch should yeah. also have their own, you know. Whenever we are selling, we always need to explain, like, hey, don't use this only for breakfast, okay? <laughs> <laughs> for everything. Yeah. It's, it's literally you can add it to a lot of things. Whether you want, you're like eating a salt or sweet. You yeah. Can, yeah. 
you can go everywhere. Friends we would everywhere. always eat it for dinner. For yeah. us, eating it for breakfast started here in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. We we love eating. They for were using as milk, well. huh? Like the cornflakes. Yeah, milk, they use, uh, But yeah. now here they're using yogurt yeah. and stuff. So and we say, okay, let's try it. it huh? Yeah, that's true. But you can start there and expand. Yeah, yeah. change Why not? the way we they think. <laughs> the only thing is we didn't take any subsidies. Huh? We have to apply yeah. some or something um, maybe. They have one here. Hmm? They have one subsidy here. Oh, yeah, oh you are the one yeah, who is taking care take of that. the <laughs> I'll tell you more about it. I am the um, proletariat. Let me see if there is questions. Don't you want to open a yogurt store? Well, uh, we could of course open a yogurt store if there is enough demand and stuff, and we can we, we, if we can keep the quality. If the rules do not change, for example, if they say hey, yogurt uh, should be more than uh, two weeks expiry date, then I cannot do it because then it will not be natural. The only thing I'm afraid is the change of rules and regulations here because the bureaucracy here is a, is a bit cruel. Yeah. Actually. In what way, if you could? They are strict. Nothing okay. is flexible and they don't listen too much if you if something really happens. For example, when the people came to check us, some were very nice yeah. and some were not nice. So it, okay. it, it's everywhere in the world eventually, yeah, that's true. but I hope it, it works out here. But yeah, I, I realized that a lot of my other friends who are starting in the food industry, they said like the regulations mm -hmm. are really, really strict and mm -hmm. very, very, um, have, they want to minimize it. Yeah. Right? They some are necessary regulations, but some are unnecessary regulations like everywhere in the world. You know, so. Yeah. That's we will true. see what happens. Yeah, but I think about the shop. We are we are more like we first want to become a create a premium yogurt brand because, like I said, mm -hmm. every yogurt brand in the industry is really low key mm -hmm. most of the most of the time. And for yogurt, you don't really have a premium brand. So mm -hmm. our first concern is to create more of a brand than yeah. a, than a shop. Nice. But hopefully, so, so you're not only uh, um, aiming to the Netherlands or Europe. You're aiming globally. Which is really good awesome. because I have a question here uh, from Aywafa says, "Where do you see your business in 2025? 20, Where do you 25? Yeah, probably like hopefully, away, huh? yeah. By then we should be yeah. spreading to Europe. I think. I think and, so. Uh, <laughs> the Europe, but still we are gonna use the Dutch milk yeah. because the quality here is the top. Uh, the eventually. Dinner. So it's gonna be a Dutch cow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere, which is actually the dairy. You don't really, people don't really realize that the dairy industry is a lot of it come from the Netherlands. A lot yeah. of milks and yeah. cheeses True. go to of course, of so course. many around the world from yeah. the Netherlands mm -hmm. because they have so many cows. Let <laughs> me see if there's another question. Yeah, there is a question that says, What is the most thing you like in Rotterdam? What is the most mm. thing you like in Rotterdam? I think you are outside <laughs> more, huh? You can end, uh, end the answer this way. Mm, I just love the city itself, like how diverse it is and how you can do anything. Like it's really new in the center, but you can also go like to Kralingse Plus, for example, even though it's the city center, it's mm -hmm. still the nature. Like you have a little bit of everything and yeah. I never feel bored in the city. I, I really like True. that. It's a very nice city. The only thing is they have to open the shopping center, the museums and the cinemas late at night. I agree yes. with you. Oh my 100 God. Oh my God. I am with him I on mean, this. You you have to open it. Of yeah. course. I, I, I know people don't like to work at night, they want to be with their uh, yeah. parents. But now it's technology. You know? yeah. Soon you can just put you know, the ready things on the place and stuff. But uh, if the people want to go, let them go. I mean, yeah, you cannot close everybody to the house at 8 o'clock after everywhere is closed. I know, I 100% agree with yeah. you on this. Some people want to work at yeah. night, you know, True. but they, like I, when I moved here first, when everything closes at 5, I was like, are you kidding? Yeah. I, I just woke up, but now I want to know, I'm just joking. I mean, we but are like, not from Istanbul, you know, like a big city. We are from a small city in Turkey, and even there, <laughs> We can find something to do at 11 o'clock or something yeah, besides yeah. drinking uh, or exactly. something. Or going you know, to the so cinema. Yeah. Whatever is open, like, and restaurants close like at, what, 10? Yeah, True. the kitchen closes. It's yeah. just yeah. crazy. But I think the more uh, globalization hits, True. I think the more people are going to stay yeah, It's unavoid unavoidable, actually. Yeah, yeah. there will be yeah. two shifts. People were in the morning and people at night. Mm. It will be like New York. Um, mm -hmm. Soon. Let me see if there is another... Okay, there is, I don't know, from your part, is there? Oh, uh, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> just waves. Um, okay, so one best place, since you both know a lot about the food industry, one best restaurant that you like to go to or eat out and one for you? 
Hmm, that's that's very hard. I didn't try everything, so yeah, yeah. whatever I say <laughs> is gonna be a bit sided. <laughs> but uh, I can say until today, the best one of the best restaurants that I have ever been is the Zeys Out. The Zeys Out. That, that's that's the, nice. That's one of the best. What about you? Um... <laughs> Tough, huh? I would say either the Milan or Aki. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are really good. And Milan recently got a yeah, they are new, star huh? yeah. even. Yeah. I, d I don't know about them. I oh, will okay. go you should. It's, yeah, just, I it's just opened, I think, huh? it's a few months ago. The, the yeah. Milan. Okay. Oh. Where is it? Milan is just there. over there in, inside the Marriott Hotel. Oh, okay. And I'll Aki try. Is, yeah, because it's the in Millennium in Building or something they call it, huh? Yeah, That's they the used name. to, yeah. It, okay. was, uh, it was really beautiful for, I don't want to say, <laughs> Marriott took over, but it was like the Manhattan. All oh, right. The Manhattan. It looked like the Manhattan. One, huh? Yeah. yeah and it, uh, but I will okay. go try it. Sure. Okay, this question I like to ask uh, every guest. Assume that this mic is broadcasted to each and every person on this planet. So mm. everybody is listening to you right now. Every little person, big person, whatever, <laughs> around the globe is listening to you. What your message would be? Mm. You are the one who is the auditorium. Well, is it about like anything? Our... It could be personal business, it doesn't mm. matter. I think I would just, I would like people on this earth to be more good hearted in general. So I would say something about love or being good or spreading something kind. nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. really kindness related stuff. Yeah. What are you? Well, me, I don't know. I would just tell them to uh, always try to achieve Idiot. better and to take care of themselves <laughs> yeah, but if, they, if they don't take care of themselves then they cannot actually uh, you know, learn or more yeah. but seriously i wish uh, they would just uh, always improve themselves to pass the certain limit that binds us to this uh, system right now that we have the anarchy and the strongest takes the biggest piece of the cake and stuff the so big fish is the small one True. No, yeah. no. It, it can happen. It's the it's the, yeah, I the natural but thing. Said, like, yeah. <laughs> but we should be totally different than the nature. I think. You gonna start it? Like that's how so. change starts. By by how, how to say? You gonna be the change you, you want to see? Yeah. <laughs> In the world. Wish, thanks to you, we can reach out to people. Uh, so. Oh, thanks. It starts from everyone else. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna make me try. <laughs> um, all right, any last call to action? Do you want people to, how to people reach you in person? Where are they gonna find your yogurt? I know a lot of them are gonna be, mm -hmm. uh, just people wanna taste it. Where can they go to buy it? Uh, right now, yeah. yeah. Right now, it's not really B two C, but here at CIC, they can always visit oh, okay. us, say hi. We have uh, it in I the kitchen. You, at no, no, CIC. it will be B two C in uh, Kinderburg Rai de Koi, yeah, where in, we produce in few okay. days, in few weeks, where we produce, and we are also planning to go to some uh, supermarkets, like certain ones, because yeah. I cannot give all the supermarkets in the whole Netherlands, I think, right now, because. Even if I try, my expiry date is not so long and I don't have it in stock. Yeah. I have to always produce the new one and uh, that's why. So I think in uh, 2019 is going to be exciting year for the food industry in Netherlands. Yeah. Nice. So if they want to eat it now, they come to you at CAC and you can taste it. Mm -hmm. um, and if they want to reach you, if you can give your website, anything. Oh. That, that yeah, if they want, yeah. just let Luvia. us know. We will NL. drop them. <laughs> Luvia.nl and then the, you guys have also on Instagram, Luvia Yogurt. Mm -hmm. At Luvia uh, Yogurt, I will also tag them uh, below. Guys, you have been oh, amazing. Thank you, thank so, you so much for such this opportunity. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Me too. Um, it's there very beautiful. Nothing. Thanks a lot for tuning Thank in you. and <laughs> happy holiday! Happy New Year! Perfect 2019! Yeah! <laughs> See you guys next year! Take care! Bye! Bye! <laughs>